that the culture industry was set up an awful long time ago, and Plato talked about it, in fact, and how you create cultures, and those at the top must be in charge, because anything coming from the bottom might have a ripple effect where it would it would go against the plans of those who own and rule the country. So we find that we've been degraded generation by generation uh, for many, many years by that, that tube that you watch, that television tube. It's not to, there to entertain you as the biggest tool to manage your mind and eventually your behavior that was ever invented. I've gone on about Beria before, who worked in the Soviet Union. And in the 30s, he talked about how to change a culture. In his day, they got it down to about five years. He said it used to take us 70 years to make any major changes in the way people behave. And there's a whole list of things they wanted, you know, destruction of the family, massive promise unity for the West, all that stuff. Same as the Frankfurt School, it was a branch that came over to destroy the West and is still in charge today, by the way, of all media and entertainment. And there's no end to where they're going to go with it. Remember what uh, uh, Huxley's brother mentioned too, um, Julian Huxley, who was the CEO, CEO of UNESCO, to try and create a world culture via education, ropping in all the, all the national education uh, associations into this world association so that they'll teach the same stuff. And he said the same thing. He says, well, eventually we'll teach them uh, to basically rut like rabbits. Uh, as long as they don't have any children, they don't want children, you see. So they, they could have a, a field day, basically, literally, or anywhere else they want to do it. And uh, uh, as long as they had no children, that was the main thing. Plus, he said it would stop all bonding and be the end of the family unit, which is, which is what's happened already. It's actually here. And then you find they're still going at it today. And it, and it didn't stop just with that. With, with, uh, they've had so many of the so-called stars that built up. And you can, you can build anybody into a star. Honestly, you can. Because when the big boys who own the system that take you over, it doesn't matter what you look like, who you are, uh, and of course with the day's kind of music and the kind of mixers and equipment they have, they can make anybody sound much the same as the, what you're, the, the wailing that you're hearing at the moment, the, all that wailing that you hear. And... Uh, of course, they've, they've got songs out about lesbian love and gay love and all the rest of it. Lady Gaga now tells little children, little girls, it's time and it's fun to screw two guys at a time. I'll put that link up for you too. Because, yep, that's what your little children are watching now. And it's not Lady Gaga's idea, believe you me. She's just a little whore who's been picked up. She could have been a stripper. Probably didn't get so much money at that. But she'll do whatever she's told and she'll behave in whichever way. Because the real boys behind her are the guys that manage her, the big boys that create your culture. Back with more after this break. Hi folks, we're back, cutting through the matrix, just talking about how nothing happens by itself and how when everyone at the bottom is dysfunctional, uh, then there's no unity amongst any of them. They're wrong. There's so many different things. They never stand up and fight anything at all. That's part of the whole system. That's why it's going down that way. You need unity and common values to stand up together against anything. And I've said this many times. If you actually got so many groups up who think they're fighting what they call the New World Order, they'd end up fighting each other. When you really find out what they're, oh, you will have that, but we'll also have this. I'm not kidding you. And they would start battling each other. You see, and um, this article here is from Holland, and it says shock after a Dutch priest endorses pedophilia. Well, it's part of this man boy love association deal, and it's also part of the world's agenda because in the 2001, when the the, the association, the World Association of your censor committees that was supposed to watch all all media to make sure it's not too overboard for you, for your country, and you pay them fantastic salaries, by the way, through your government to do so. They met uh, in 2001, a couple of months before 9-11, and, um, and it came out in the newspapers then that said, now that we won the battle, they, this is the, your censor boys talking. Now they won the, the battle for homosexuality and get more and more stuff on television, which will prove more, more from now on, they actually said the next goal will be bestiality and intergenerational sex. That's what they want to call pedophilia. 
And Amsterdam, it says Dutch uh, Catholic uh, Church and the Salesian Order investigating relevations that a Salesian priest served on board on the board of a group that promotes pedophilia with the full knowledge of the boss. The order's top official in the Netherlands, Delegate Herman Spronk, confirmed a statement that the priest identified by RTL News as 73-year-old Father Van B. served on the board of Martin, uh, a group that campaigns to end the Dutch ban on adult child sex. The group is widely reviled but not outlawed. And... It says, however, Spronk's own superior in Belgium said he would investigate both Spronk and Van B after both men were quoted by RTL News as saying such relationships aren't always harmful. And that's the whole thing they're going for, uh, by the way. And I know even the religion it initially comes from, it's very, very old, where they say there's no real harm uh, done us. This is the same stuff, too. You find all the other uh, weirdos uh, that gave you all your free love and all the rest of it. It's the same kind of stuff. Um, uh, that eventually dis- helped destroy society years ago, coming out in the guise of science. That, that there's no real, like the Kinsey report, for instance, where they hired um, professionals and government members, by the way. Kinsey, Kinsey's main character for buggering babies, which he did very well, apparently, and, and photographed it all and filmed it all with stopwatches to see if they cried, etc. Um, uh, yeah, he, he was a government agent, he worked for the U.S. government. And Kinsey eventually hired prostitutes and, and homosexuals and said they were the normal people and that he used in his test group. He tried to tell the public it was all normal people, but no, they're all homosexuals, prostitutes and so on that he used, apart from the children who generally were in homes. And that's why they hired these professional pedophiles who were, were really uh, working for the government to go around the different orphanages to do these sexual experiments with little children, even babies as young as a year or so, a year and a half. So there's a lot of evil with us in the world, and of course I'll be condemned for even saying that because there are ones out there too that will demand their rights to do this kind of stuff, and that's what you're living in. That's what you're living in today. And I've never ever said I was here to save the world because I'm darn well, well, I know. Uh, that you cannot save a, a dying mass of people who've lost all their values. You can't do it. You cannot. People who've lost all the normal values that keep a society strong and workable, uh, uh, once if they've lost all their values, they can't stand up against anything. And they're gone. The ancients said that too. They knew that then. So that's where they go, well, if there's no harm involved, and this is the same uh, thing that they're giving with, with dogs and, and, and cats and everything else that pe- some strange people have a, a lust after, that as long as there's no harm done to the animal, then what's the problem? Well, how can an animal consent, for goodness sake? Huh? How can a child consent or a baby that's going gaga consent? But you can't get into the head of the psychopaths, you know. It's a very strange, strange world they live in. But they will rationalize everything for themselves. It simply will make no sense to anybody else. Unless you've watched lots of TV. Because you're already being degraded through entertainment to accept anything at all. And believe you me, they've, ne- they've, never, they've never finished. They're not even halfway through their projects yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. Hi folks, I'm back and we're cutting through the matrix. We'll try Carlton from New York there. Hello, hello, Mr. Watt. This is Carlton. Oh, how are you? Okay. All right, how you doing? Not uh, so bad, yeah. Talking about um, media manipulation. And I don't know if you knew, but Oprah Winfrey just came out with a, um, fairly recently just came out with a new network. Now, I know you might be aware her production company was named Harpo. Yeah. Productions, which is like her name back with Oprah. That's but right. the new um, network she comes out with is OWN, owned or Oprah Winfrey Network. But you know what that is backwards, too. That's right, New World Order. <laughs> <laughs> but um, as, as well as I was thinking about the music industry now, I say the two biggest rappers out here now is probably Lil Wayne and. Um, on the, for the males and for the females is another uh, person under his same label 
uh-huh. named Nicki Minaj. Now, Little Wayne is—he's outrageous in what he's what he talks about. I mean, just the same degrading mess anyway. But I asked these little kids I am around where my job is on their way to school was. Like I told you, like you talked about before, the, the blending of the of the genders, basically, and the androgynous type of yeah. hermaphroditic agenda that's coming up. But like I told the kid, I was like, about 10 years ago, we used to get talked about if our pants was too tight. Now, it's it's it was it was the baggy jeans with the sag, and like when I was a teenager, now it's the tight jeans with the sag for the yeah. boys, and then the girls. And that got projected through the rap of Lil Wayne. But for the girls, is this whole we don't need boys or we don't need a man type thing, and like real, real loose with the with how they treat other women and all the type of stuff sexually. You know what I mean? And sure. I, oh, yeah. To me, that comes from the the, 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 the girl Nicki Minaj because she actually came out and stated that she doesn't even really like men. <laughs> like, yeah. it, but yeah. but yeah, I see I see it, and I I asked the little kids like, where did y'all get that style from? Because I I told I was like like if y'all came up when I came up, we would be talking about y'all right now. <laughs> it, was, it was crazy. I, they just don't know where anything comes from. They just accept it like it's nothing. Exactly, they accept it, and, and as a ma- I mean, Plato went through. He says it, it works together. The culture industry has the those at the top putting out drama, and, and as movies today, that is, you know, his day was drama on the stage, and everyone would copy it. It works together, he said, with the fashion industry. The fashion industry, he called it, and he also called it that with the music industry as well. So they all work together. And then little children, as you say, they, they see the clothes appear in the stores and they buy them. They never think, wait a minute, it took, it took uh, many meetings of top uh, designers to, to agree on this style to give to you. And there's got to be a reason for it. Just like the miniskirt, there was a reason for that, you know. And, but but uh, generation by, de- by generation, they all work together and they build up these little stars that, that they could pick off the street anywhere, anywhere and make them a star. The ones behind them know exactly what they're doing, you know, ones behind them. But uh, but thanks for calling. Thank you. Take it easy. You too. And from Hamish myself from Ontario, Canada, it's good night to meet your God or your God's school with you. <laughs>